Hi guys and welcome back to Extreme Garage with me, Lawrence. As you saw in the last video, we put the stickers on the side now and we've done the door plaques. Today, uh, I've had it for a while, but I'm going to fit it today, is the bullhorn. So, I've gone for a nice long one. It's an official one that they use on the top of fire engines, so we're going to fit that. Normally, you'd fit it with just a small electrical compressor like this, which is just a motor, and it just blows air on demand. But... My personal opinion on these is that they won't give enough air through to give a loud enough and a harsh enough sound because this has got to sound like, you know, ship fog on style noise, which is what I'm after. I'm not after a little squeak. So instead, I'm going to go for an individual air tank and compressor so it's all standalone so we can fill this up. It is... It is is a 150 psi tank so that's going to hold a lot of air and it's going to make it sound a lot louder we're going to put that under the back seats we're going to run it to a solenoid so the air will go come out of here when we press a button it's going to let the air out into the bottom of the bull horn so we're going to fit that on the top if I if we get on top, I'll show you where. So I'm back on I'm on the roof now. So we're going to fit this. Oh no! Hang on, we'll go through the back. Yes. So we're going to fit that like that. So it comes out slightly. Obviously centered. I think that's going to look pretty damn cool. So I think first we fit the ball horn to the roof. And then we'll do all the piping from inside the cab then and down. <coughs> so I've just marked the holes of where I'm going to put it. Oh, I did. thought I'd just marked the hole. No, I didn't choke on that side, so I've got to do that again now. So... It's going to be situated bang on there. Oops. We go straight down there. We have the sharpie. That should be a nice hole. There. Yes. So that's where I'm drilling. And on the other side here, I've already marked it this side. So hopefully there's no wires underneath. I should really check. But we'll just try it and see what happens. through comes a nice little rubber base plate just to uh, help make a seal that's that one we'll just tighten it from underneath in the back Something else underneath this side, though. Is that a metal beam by any chance? That'd be quite annoying if it is a metal beam. I need that other drill bit. I'll just do it. If, we, if I've stuffed it up, I've just got to cover it with something. Right, how many times is someone going to look on the top? That's what I mean. I'll just get some paint and paint it. You could just put a sticker over it. Yeah. In true Lawrence style, we're going to eyeball this. <laughs> we're going to go for there. That's where I hit electronics. I do believe there is. I'm gonna to have to check this. I do think there might be something there. The metal beam. So that's the pers there's the ply the perspex. Fiberglass. We 
unless it's just really thick fiberglass. Okay. That's one way to break. We'll find out that there's a crucial part to the fire engine under here. Ow. I think that's just really thick fiberglass there. I'm going to have a look from inside, but that would be perfect for that. So what you do? So what you're doing? So I've got to take the uh, the thing out now where the red where the radio well it's where the siren goes because it's just in a pigging way. There's that one. That's one. There's the elves. You can hardly see it, but I can see this side. Hold on. Right, so I've had to take all the line out of the whole front so I can get to the holes. I'll put the nut on the front one now. I'm going to feed this up uh, so we can attach it to the actual bull horn on top and then screw the bull horn in because there is a metal lining. Uh, it's fiberglass and then there's a thin metal sheet. So I've just drilled through the metal sheet to push this through. And then now I'm gonna, I'm gonna, instead of nuts and bolting it, which, to be honest, I'm gonna nut and bolt it. I'm gonna drill through the next hole to it and nut and bolt it again now I can see where the hole is. So I'm just gonna feed my pipe up first. So. Oh God. Oh wow, it's well bent. I need some sort of device. the wrong way. So we've now fitted the bull horn. We missed a bit of the uh, build out of it, but uh, I did stuff up a little bit here, but I filled the hole back in with the black silicon. You should measure it really before you do it properly. <laughs> but it's in place, it's rock solid. So the pipe's already been fed in. All we've got to do next is fit the air tank under the back seats and pair it all up. But the horn's in place. So right, day two then now. What I've done already off camera, I've routed through the airline because it was a very long-winded task. I had to take all the roof panels out to feed it down the door. So now it comes from underneath the horn round by the driver's seat and then the red one's the one to the horn and then my blue one which is that side that's going to connect to the solenoid and then we run it down here and then down this panel here into under the seats so i've got that one now now my air tank i need to go and grab my rubber bungs but that is where it's going to sit right there and then we've got the two cables. Over this side, we've got loads of wiring anyway, and we've got some 12 volt uh, sources of power this side. So for that, it's a simple little standalone fuse that we're just gonna run from there, straight over to the main source there. And then that's installed, ready to go. I am gonna probably put a little switch on the side here so I can turn it off and on because we don't want it always running when the, when the air runs low in it. So I'll screw this in. And then my pipe just goes into there like that. And then that side's sorted then. Then it's literally just the solenoid connected up to a switch. So that just goes into there. And then that's it. So it's going to sit there lovely. Best tool in the toolbox, they are. It's not a tool, but oh, I can't put my feet on that side. Some who did that? Who designed that? Oh, okay, <laughs> we'll go through it. We'll just go through it. Right, so the rubber feet are supposed to stop the vibrations a bit. Can you go back a bit or not? I could yeah. do, but 
just go through it. No, I mean like for the light. Always charge up your batteries before you do any jobs. Don't be like me, you never put them on charge. I got like five of these and I haven't charged any of them up. If there's another one with a little bit of charging done, please. Okay. Super duper. Right, I'll finish these two off. Right, so we're going to connect now. Now that's that's proper solid in place, that is. Connect the hose is connected up. Here now, this should shut off when it gets up to uh, pressure. So what we'll do, we're going to connect obviously that to there, and then over to a power source over this side. And there's a lot of wiring in there. A lot of wiring. So, we need to work here now, Dan. We need to find a power source from there. Now, because I'm running, it's a very little, little thing, but because I'm going to be running power from this side over to this side, just in case the plug gets disconnected, I'm putting bullet points, the uh, bullet points, I'm putting bullet connectors on, but I'm leaving the covered one as being the power source. And then that one, which goes into that one, being onto the the device because what happens is if this came apart now if that touches the framework it ain't gonna do any damage to anything whereas if that one touched the framework so if I had it that way around it unplugged some way along the way and then touch the frame it's gonna spark and arc out if the fuse was you know it'll blow the fuse so I'm gonna put the fuse further back here uh, but that is gonna be connected just to avoid that and that one's gonna be on there I like that. So I'll quickly blast through this. So up in the front now, we've got the solenoid. It's just a 24 volt, 12 or 24 volt solenoid. So the compressed air is going to come into here. And then when we press the button, it opens up the valve and out shoots the, the air shot. So, oh. so up here, this is where I've got both. The, that, that one's running to the back compressor and this hard nylon one is running to the horn on top so that one is just a nice push fit because I bought the right size connectors but because these are different sizes now that's going to be pushed onto there but it is really tight so it's time for a cup of tea ten minutes later all right then that should do and then hopefully that's going to give that enough moldability now to just push your bleeder. There we go. Still needs a lot of pushing on, mind you, but still a principle behind it. There we go. Happy days. So what we can do now is fill the tank up and just whack a 12 volt battery across that just to blast the horn because I don't want to bore you with installing a switch in the dash I just want to hear the horn so we'll fill the air tank up now and we'll blast the horn so we've wired up the solenoid and the compressor we've stuck a button on the dash for it do you want to hear it? <laughs> So if you like the horn, don't forget to smash the thumbs up. And if you haven't already, go and subscribe. We've got plenty more coming. And I'll see you again soon.